Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and well, this video is a bit of a two for one because we're looking at two, I think, pretty cool things. We're looking at a Master Lock System 29 padlock, and I thought I knew quite a lot of Master Locks, but uh, the first time I saw one of these was last year at LockCon in the Netherlands. Uh, where Rubber Band, who some of you will know in the community and also he's very active on Twitter, was there and he had some of these System 29 Master Locks. I'd never seen one before, so really can't wait to show you the body. But the actual lock inside, uh, the core that he chose, was this Asa Abloy Corbin Ruswin Access 3. Now, there is a version of this which actually has um, pins which are angled just like a Medico biaxial. Uh, but this isn't like that at all. This is a standard straight bitted uh, lock, but um, I don't think I've seen an Access 3 on YouTube. There's probably one out there somewhere. Of course there is. I probably just missed it, but it's still a really, really cool lock. So yeah, we get uh, to see a Mass Lock System 29 padlock. I'd imagine it's relatively rare because I just haven't seen it and also the uh, Corbin Ruswin Access 3 core. So yeah, for me, really awesome. So I imagine, especially if you don't really like Master Lock, this might actually convince you that it's actually pretty good and might even become your all-time favourite Master Lock. Awesome kind of box, bit retro. And you can sort of see what's going on there. It's saying, look, whatever you've got in your door handle, your key in knob, then, uh, yeah, you can put that in the padlock and, or, or, I guess, vice versa. Um, I'm telling you it's got a two inch clearance on there. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just really cool. But when you actually have a look inside it and actually how it's all put together, um, I think it's sort of even better. So yes, uh, it is a hard seal shackle. It is quite long. So if you were going to use this, ideally you'd want something to cover, uh, that shackle so it's it, you know, isn't going to be prone to twisting and cutting uh, attacks, but it does appear to be anti-shim, and it is quite a nice meaty shackle. The body is really heavy, laminated plates, um, some heavy riveting. You know, you've got, it's going to take you a while to um, hack your way into this. And then, well, look, look at this bottom. I need to undo it all first. We'll get to picking the core in a second, but I just want to show you the, the padlock, really, to begin with, because, like I said, it's just something which I haven't really seen at all. Um, have I got it? Yeah. So it's got this really kind of... Let's try and remove the key. Hold on. Should have done this the other way around. There. It's got this really deep sort of anti-drill plate here to protect the core. Look at that. That's that's that's, that's pretty cool. Ah, there's a screw. It's pretty cool, don't you think? And um, it's all held in just by uh, this piece of hardened steel as well. And then the inside is this core here it is so yeah really just great now let's now see the padlock which i think you'll agree is pretty cool have a look at this keyway now you might think that it's hugely open and to a degree it sort of is but also look at that key you can see that it's actually got quite heavy warding on there not paracentric but close and that's because the warding doesn't start at the top of the lock. You can just see, uh, where's a pick, where's a pick? Just down here where it does. And if I move that pin up, you might be able to see some warding that side and down the other side there, just as you look inside the lock. So it is quite heavily warded. You can get in there with um, an 18,000th or below pick relatively easily. Um, but you do have a lot of space at the bottom of the lock here for the pick to get lost in. So I came up with an idea that I'd just get a piece of bent wiper blade as a tensioner, but just stick it all the way down that side of the lock, like that. Um, and then top tension while I'm picking here, like that. So what I ended up doing is I'm using this piece of wiper blade as a guide to center my pick and, uh, and use top of the keyway tension to pick it. Well, you know, at least it works for me. Let's throw this core in a vice and, well, let's have a go. See if it see if it works out for us. So we are in the vice, but I did do a really silly thing and I actually mounted this in wrong. I don't pick many key knob cylinders and uh, I put it in the vice in a way which meant that the tailpiece 
was, wasn't rotating around. Luckily I checked before I started recording, but um, yeah, I should really know better, but I suppose we all make mistakes down again. So just going to use this piece of wiper blade as a bit of a guide for this 18,000th piece and gem, but it's not going to provide tension. We're going to be using uh, this two millimeter pry bar. This is a hooligan bar from Law Lock Tools. And if you were to pick it in the body, which doesn't make any difference to its difficulty, I have to say um, this is definitely long enough to go through and pick up the front of the lock. Anyway, um, gonna pop that in, bit of tension, light tension, really light tension. Just going to rest my thumb on here and put the pick all the way to the back, which is really assisted by this piece of wiper blade. And um, and have a go. So uh, six seems to be okay. Five. Oh, overset five. Six five. Mm, nothing for yet. Maybe. No, no. Okay. Three. I might take this out now. It served its purpose for getting to the ones at the back. Bit on two maybe, and maybe something on one. I don't know. Let's have a look. Go right to the back again. So six, five, four, three. I think that, I think that's picked. Two, nothing. Which means that we're on pin one now. Very hard to pick pin one from experience. It's, seems to be very high set and doesn't want to be picked. Very mean of it. Um, so you'll see there that it looks slightly overset and as soon as it um, comes back down I can feel the spring tension on that pin so it it's, it's just doesn't want to be picked. Um, maybe a deeper hook like this lunatic might be able to coax it into submission. Let's try that for now, okay. Let's go back through. So, six, five, seems fine. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, let's try a deep hook now. I'm going up, up in deepness in these um in this lock I think on pin three there pin one again back through so um I think we're almost Got it. This this lock isn't um, a really easy lock, which I really like. It seems to be quite a challenge. It's got lots of spools in there, tight tolerances, not an easy pick. Yeah, definitely a, a fun lock for sure, um, albeit not easy. So that's pin three. Which I think means that I might sort of drop pin one. Six drop something, but what? Going back through, I think it's pin one now. Let me get onto it. Let me get onto it. Let me get onto it. And we got it, and we are open. Who now? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, that, that's a tough pick, really tough. Um, let's have a look at that bitting again. I mean, that's, I think it's probably quite good bitting. Let's have a look at that deep hook. So I'm going in from the bottom here, and I, I, that just about clears pin two. For some reason, pin one is really hard to get to. I think it's because that's where the entrance of the lock is. You've got to lever, if you're going to lever it, really high. That's a very steep angle to set that. 
and same with make well less so for for pin four there but regardless of um those pin positioning something about this lock just makes it hard and i think that's good i mean that's a really good sign this isn't an easy lock so this access three core even though it doesn't have the angled pins like the medico that you need to rotate as well as lift uh, it doesn't have a sidebar it's um it's nevertheless not particularly easy and well do you know what i think that's good so let's have a gut of this lock Okay, so here we are. Now, this seems to have some wafers in the key pin side in positions six and five here. There you go. And these are spooled key pins in six, three, and two, which act as overset traps. So if you accidentally push these key pins too far, they'll fall into another uh, false set, but in a bad way, meaning you have to sort of drop everything to get it back. Now, I think part of the reason why this lock is so effective is that they these are very, very nice, very tight steel, very deep spools. So you've got extremely deep spools made of steel with very thin rims. And my experience of very, very thin rim deep steel spools is that they are really really hard to to pick usually brass being a bit weaker ha tends to have less deep spooling and slightly thicker edges in again my experience and they are a little bit softer feeling when you pick them these feel hard and these are all steel springs as well which actually put a lot of pressure on the pins in a downward force so you tend to have to use a lot more force on your pick and using High, you know, greater force on your pick you, uh, against steel springs you tend to use higher tension all of that seems to contribute to just making this a little harder to pick now uh, these are very thin wafers and they don't really offer too much of a, a a difference in getting a shear line in those positions not with a key bitting I'm thinking though with um, maybe pin stack one two three four I think sometimes you might be able to bypass that little spool. Um, maybe, maybe not. Might be worth just dropping those into an empty chamber just to see if it would have much of an effect. So what's that? That's four. What well, makes a difference in what which one exactly? Uh, so yes, I think if you were lucky. can't get that in come on if you're lucky not too heavy-handed you could avoid that spool but just by picking pin four up to this shear line but if you picked it too high of course um, you would end up getting this um, spool pin active so yeah I, I guess it's quite a variable lock as well when you pick it depending on you know what you pick first what binds first all those factors it's kind of really cool, very cool lock, and a, a, like I said, a lot more challenging than I had expected this lock to be, considering it's got a relatively wide keyway, even though it's not massively paracentric. Now, there is the actual warding. You can see it much better from this side. It's got cutouts for where the pins are, but you can see that it's got warding that runs all the way down here and here, and some little grooves there and on the other side. But you can also see, if I do that, that it is completely not paracentric and get your pick all the way down it like that as long as it's not too thick so yeah it's kind of an um, interesting uh, quite contrary lock but it's got a nice steel core steel pins I, I really think that really makes it feel um, tougher a bit harder to pick anyway great lock great lock body 
the oops system 29 there and um yeah hope you enjoy the video and i'll see you all next time